In this video, I want to show you 10 strange math books. These math books have really basic mathematics and also really advanced mathematics. And they're strange for different reasons. Let's go ahead and look at the first one. This is called The Theory of Spin Ores, and it was written by Elie Cartan. So spin ores were first used by physicists in the field of quantum mechanics. And so this is a book on spin ores. Elie Cartan did a lot of work with spin ores, and he discovered spin ores in their most general sense. This is a Dover book, so it's a reprint, which means that it's really, really affordable. So really advanced mathematics here, the theory of spin ores. This one is really strange. It's not even a book. It's actually a pamphlet. It's called Cambridge Tracts in Mathematics and Mathematical Physics. There you see the general editors. And this is number two, the integration of functions of a single variable by G.H. Hardy. That's right, this is the same Hardy who invited Ramanujan to go to England to work with him. So if you've seen the movie, the Ramanujan movie, um, Hardy uh, is in that movie, at least the actor that plays Hardy. And yeah, it's super, super cool. The integration of functions of a single variable by G.H. Hardy, fellow of Trinity College. This was withdrawn from Champion Hall Library, Cambridge at the University Press, 1905. Wow. And here it says, it even tells you here, this pamphlet, this pamphlet is intended to be read as a supplement to the accounts of indefinite integration given in textbooks on the integral calculus. So in other words, this is a supplement for a math book. So if you have a math book, Hardy wrote this as a supplement. The student who is only familiar with the latter is apt to be under the impression that the process of integration is essentially tentative in character and that its performance depends on a large number of disconnected, though ingenious, devices. Mm. Here you can see some of the contents of this strange pamphlet. And this is really rare. Um, I usually leave links in the description to books, but this video, I mean, some of the books are available, but I don't know if I'll be able to find this one. Spherical trigonometry is strange in some sense because we don't study it anymore. This is something that is just not taught anymore. And it used to be taught in schools. This is an entire book on spherical trigonometry. This used to be something that everyone learned back in the day. Spherical trigonometry by Raymond W. Brink, PhD professor of mathematics in the University of Minnesota. Here you can see the contents of this strange book. And it's, it's just really weird. You know, most people have never heard of spherical trigonometry. Looks like someone spilled water or coffee on this book. And let me just show you like the intro because it's actually a, a pretty good book. This is a pretty good book. Great circles. The following facts are familiar to the student or agree with his intuition and experience. A sphere is a surface, all points of which are at a common distance from a point called the center. Yep. A radius of the sphere is a line segment extending from the center to a point on the surface. Here he talks about great circles. The curve of intersection of a sphere made by a plane is a circle. If the plane passes through the center of the sphere, the section is a great circle. Otherwise, it is a small circle of the sphere. So that's the definition of a great circle. So interesting subject. In theory, um, you could buy a book, maybe this book or another book on spherical trigonometry, and you could learn it. It's something that is accessible to most people. If you've had some math um, and you know some, some basic trig, you could, you could study this stuff and learn this mysterious subject. This is origometry, mathematical methods in paper folding by Thomas C. Hall. Let me show you the praise that this book has. This book is pretty much written by the authority. Tom Hole has always been the authority and historian on origami mathematics. In this beautiful book, he ties together a wide range of classic and modern results, grounding them in their rich history. Yeah, and this is pretty much going to be the standard for years to come probably on you know in the field of origometry. So this is a really interesting book. If you are into origometry or you're thinking about exploring some interesting mathematics with paper folding. This is some pretty serious mathematics, right? This is the book to get if you're interested in learning the mathematics of paper folding.
I wanted to include this one because I'm always shocked by the fact that Ramanujan used this book and this book alone to learn mathematics. I mean, maybe he had a class and, you know, some other notes from a friend. But as far as books, the story is when he was 16, his friend lent him a library copy of uh, this book here uh, by George S. Carr, A Synopsis of Elementary Results in Pure and Applied Mathematics. And this is volume one. And it's basically a list of results. It's got so much cool math in it. And it's just shocking to me that, you know, someone can pick this up and just, you know, do a lot of math. At the same time, this book is special in some sense because it has so much information in it. It's just result, result, result. And it's just stuff that you wouldn't expect. It's things that you don't see in a lot of modern books. Um, so it's a very, very interesting book. And this one's actually a reprint and widely available. This book literally contains strange mathematics. In fact, that's what it is. It's a book of counterexamples in topology. So you have all of the weird pathological examples that are good to know because they're counterexamples to certain things which you think might be true. You know, there's certain things that might be true in most cases, but then you find some topological space that has that property. And so you say, okay, well, it's not true in every case because here's an example where it's not true. And that's an example of a counterexample. Very, very wonderful book to have if you are studying topology. Its counterpart is Counterexamples in Analysis, another really strange book that has just a lot of strange mathematics in it. Um, it just has counterexamples, basically. Not all of it is super strange. Here's an example. Divergent series satisfying any two of the three conditions of the standard alternating series theorem. Okay. Interesting. And over here, that's, that's, that's a cool one. How about this one here? Uh, a convergent series A sub n and the divergent series B sub n such that Oh, interesting. Okay, such that these terms are bigger. So the terms are actually bigger. So it says, let A sub n be the conditionally convergent alternating harmonic series. Yep. Ah, perfect. Yeah, that works. So interesting, right? So interesting examples that, uh, and it's, it's not just series, right? It's differentiation. It's infinite series. Um, you have integration. You have limits. So it's got a lot of really cool stuff. Pretty sure this book had like a cult following in the 70s. People would mail in suggestions to the authors uh, of this book, uh, Swan and Johnson, and they would take those suggestions into account when writing um, their new book. Here it talks a little bit about that. They actually give you know their address where you can like mail them things. And you see it has multiple copyrights. So this book is pretty old. So it was reprinted several times. 75, 76, and 77 by Howard Swan and John Johnson. And then it's basically a comic book, but it's calculus. And it's pretty serious calculus. I don't think that, like, it's easy calculus. Some of the stuff in here and some of the examples in here are pretty hardcore. I mean, there's an example in here where he gives delta as, like, some crazy expression and he goes through. And I mean, look at this. There's some epsilons and deltas here. So, interesting book. Um... It's kind of a fun book if you can find a copy um, for not too much. You can see some interesting things in here. But yeah, you could, in theory, use this to learn calculus. I mean, it, it'll, you'll learn a lot of mathematics. There's a lot of serious math in this book. Don't let the funky mustache fool you. This is something that is taught sometimes. It's called Methods of the Theory of Functions of Several Complex Variables. So if you've taken complex variables and you've studied that, you might be wondering, whoa, what, what is it like to study, um, you know, the theory of functions of several complex variables? And this book by Vladimirov uh, can tell you that. So this is a very, very advanced book. Um, it is definitely not for beginners. Here's just a quick look at the contents. This is math that probably most people have never seen. What does that say? Pluri subharmonic functions and pseudo convex domains. Domains and envelopes of holomorphy. Integral representations. Yeah, so this is pretty advanced stuff. And I know that they teach this in grad school. I know that, for example, um, many, many years ago, and, I, and I'm just going off memory here. So before, this is before I went to grad school, I remember looking at, I believe it was the University of Michigan, and I believe they offered a course on uh, functions of several complex variables. And I thought, wow, how interesting. How interesting is that? Because um, it's not something that you really hear about much, right? But you can actually get books on it. And this is an example 
of such a book. A Book of Curves by E.H. Lockwood, Cambridge University Press. This one still has the dust jacket. Someone left a comment, um, and it's been a while, and, and they said they asked me about this book. And I meant to reply, and I, I forgot to reply. So hopefully they watch this video. Um, maybe I can find the comment and reply. A Book of Curves. Because I had talked about this book before, but I never, I never showed it. And so special curves, it talks about all these special curves, the parabola, the ellipse, the hyperbola, the cardioid, the limacon, the asteroid, the nephroid, the deltoid, the cycloid, look at that, the right strophoid, really strange, right? Like stuff that you wouldn't normally find in, you know, normal math books, right? So it's very, very bizarre. Here's the preface. Let's see what else is in here. Let's look at some of the, and it's a pretty hardcore book. Um, it is not... I would say that it's not just like a book for, you know, the faint of heart. You know, you, if you want to be serious about graphing, um, you can go through these directions and follow them and graph the way, you know, the book explains to graph and you'll learn some stuff. It talks about the geometrical properties. Most people don't like graphing. Um, that's just something that a lot of people don't like doing, but some people do. And if you're one of the people that does like graphing, then I really think this book is an absolute must have. I have never been um, very good at graphing. I've always, I've never been, you know, I think that some people are naturally better. They're better artists, but I can draw graphs and I know how to draw simple graphs to help me figure out, you know, certain proofs and stuff. But this is this is more than that. This is way more drawing than than that type of drawing, right? This is way more in depth. Yeah. The asteroid as a hypocycloid. Interesting book, right? Yeah, the book a book of curves. Really strange books. Not what, you know, you expect. The useful ones, at least for math students, are counterexamples in analysis and counterexamples in topology. So like if you're a math major, you should definitely have these two books um, on your bookshelf, I think, because you never know when you'll need it. And they're kind of fun. Sometimes you're bored, you'll pick it up. And if you know some analysis or you know some topology, you can look through here and you can actually understand all of the counterexamples, which is kind of fun. Anyways, until next time, keep doing math and good luck.